Hey, you're with Dr. Ken again today. We're looking at electromagnetism lesson number seven. We're looking or doing the exercise tutorial on electromagnetism. So how the video works is pretty simple, straightforward. Step one, I'll pose a question. I'll give you a couple seconds to then pause the video. You attempt the question. Step two, continue to play the video. I'll give you a hint and again, you pause the video. Then I'll give you the answer with an explanation. That's the power of these videos around how it works. And then step four, continue the video to the next question and repeat the process again. So question one, the core of a DC armature is laminated for what reason? So why do we laminate the core? To reduce heat caused by eddy currents. B simply it's an easy way to manufacture the thing. Uh, C reduce hysteresis losses or D strengthen the pole cores. So it's about physical construction or strengthening of the pole cores. So pause here. So here's your hint. What happens if the laminations were not used. And here's our answer. It reduces the heat caused by eddy currents. So the laminations are actually electrically and magnetically insulated from each other. So they're made of uh, iron and each of the laminations, I'll just very quickly draw a lamination big, it's not anywhere near this big of course, and they have an oxide coating on the outside of them. So they work magnetically but they are electrically insulated from each other. So as I put more and more laminations together there is no electrical connection between each of the laminations therefore I don't get eddy currents recirculating therefore I don't get heat coming off the laminated steel cores. So they're made of silicon steel and they've got an oxide coating on them that electrically insulates them from each other. Our next question, question two, in practice the thickness of a brush in a DC machine is generally what? equal to the thickness of a commutator segment, less than the thickness of a commutator segment, greater than the thickness of a commutator segment, or less than or equal to the thickness of a commutator segment. Basically in D we're saying it doesn't matter. So let's pause here. Here's your hint. It's all about smoothness of operation. Which one do you think might offer best smoothness of operation? And here's the answer greater than the thickness of the commutator segment. Because you want it to be leaving one as it's just making contact with the other so you actually don't have an electrical gap. You've got a tiny, tiny little bit of overlap as it were. So greater than the thickness of a commutator segment, but only just. Three, commutator segments in a DC machine are made from what kind of material? A, aluminium, B, hard drawn copper, C, brass, D, bronze. So commutator segments, think about what they do, how they do it. Here's your hint, which material provides good properties for the purpose? So the properties we're thinking about are both mechanical properties and electrical properties. The answer is hard drawn copper. So it's been specially uh, manufactured copper. It's hard drawn, so it's, it's tough, but it's also a very good conductor of electricity at the same time. So both things are covered. You've got the physical properties helping you and the electrical properties helping you. 
4. A DC generator primarily purpose is to convert. To convert what? Electrical energy to mechanical energy. Electrical energy to magnetic energy. Mechanical energy to magnetic energy. Or mechanical energy to electrical energy. A, B, C or D. Here's the hint. So we're converting energy, different kinds of energy. So which energy are we going from where to where? Think about what goes into a generator and what comes out. So we're, the answer was D, mechanical energy. That's what we're turning the shaft of the generator. And we're producing electrical energy. Yes, we go through some magnetic energy in the middle, but at the end of the day, we put in mechanical energy and we get out electrical energy. For question five, the frame, the yoke, the outside of a DC machine is made from, is usually made from A, high speed steel, B, brass, C, aluminium, D, Fabricated mild steel. So hint, apart from its mechanical purposes, what does it have to do, what else does it have to do in the frame? So it's got a mechanical process, purpose I should say. It's also got another purpose. The answer is for most of them made of high speed steel. So they've got to hold the end caps in place and you need something that's easy to machine and accurate to machine to hold the end plates which have the bearings, etc, etc. So high speed steel is what most DC machines are made from. Question six, the hysteresis losses in the armature core of a DC generator is due to what? A the load current in the armature, B, the magnetic field produced by the field windings, C, the continual reversal of the magnetic field, or D, the current in the field windings. So think about how an armature works, what it does. Here's your hint. What's happening to the magnetic molecules? cause different magnetic curves in relation to the current direction. There's a hint, the current direction. So it's the continual reversing of the magnetic field. So the armature is the only place where that's happening. It's spinning inside the magnetic field for one half of the 360 degrees for 180. It's going through the magnetic field in one direction, then on the other half it's going through it the opposite direction. So the molecules in your magnetic field are oscillating backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, causing armature losses, or what is sometimes referred to as hysteresis losses. Seven, why do compensating and interpulse assist the operation of a DC machine? These are the extra field windings that we put into a machine. So A, reduce commutative sparking by distorting the main field. B, reduce the armature sparking by minimizing the effects of field distortion. C, they increase the pole flux density. D, they improve the cross magnetization of the poles. So here's your hint. What is happening to cause sparking on the commutator? What's that actually caused by? If you remember from our lesson, we were talking about what causes sparking. So it reduces commutator sparking by minimizing the effects of field distortion by making the field so big that we end up with very little field distortion. Therefore, we end up with very little sparking. Question eight, list the six main parts of a DC machine. Can you list the six main parts? So 
So, think main parts. What are the main parts? We're not talking about the fine detail, just the six big main parts. So, there's the frame and the yoke. There are the pole cores, the field cores, the armature, the commutator, the brushes, the bearings, and the shaft. So there's actually eight of them, but if you've got any six, that's what we're looking for. So you only have to list six. I've given you eight. So there is any six of those, and you are doing well. Okay, where the compensation winding of found in a DC machine? Where is the compensating winding found in a DC machine? So think, hint, what is their purpose? What is the purpose? Maybe draw a picture to help you get it in your head. So compensating windings are embedded in the face of the main poles. So here we have the field winding. Here's the field windings at north and the field windings at south and the compensating windings are these ones in the face of the poles they're normally little rings of copper that are embedded into the face and they help with the distribution of the magnetic field they help with the field distortion they have a couple of great advantages. So that is where the compensating windings are found in a DC machine. They're in the face of the field poles. Question 10. What is the function of the brushes and a commutator in a DC machine? So what is the function of brushes and a commutator in a DC machine? So see if you can describe the connections and their purpose. So you can draw yourself a little diagram. I always say to my students, diagram says a thousand words. So a little diagram is a great way to describe it. So the brushes and commutator connect the armature coils to the external circuit and provide a switching mechanism to reverse the current as required. So that's what they do. They connect the armature and the armature is spinning inside the magnetic field and it's got current going one way for half a turn, the other way for the other half a turn. The commutator does the switching for you. So at the terminals, you get current only in the one direction. And that is the purpose. So brushes and commutator connect the armature coils to the external circuit and provide a switching mechanism to reverse the current as it is required. So that brings us to the end of Lesson 7. Hope you've enjoyed getting through the exercises and uh, testing a little bit further your understanding of electromagnetism around DC generators.